Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Lebanon Insurance Agency's very first Q&A with our very own life and health insurance specialist, Andy Blevins. Good morning. Hi, Andy. <laughs> Good morning. All right. So um, we have a long list of wonderful questions that some people have sent in and uh, that we came up with ourselves that we hear frequently. But Andy, let's just get started first with a great introduction. Um, just kind of let people know what it is that you do and how you do it. All right. Well, thank you. My name is Andy Blevins. Um, I'm a licensed life. I'm licensed in life, health, and annuity products. I mainly focus on health insurance because since 2014 and the passage of the Affordable Health Care Act. There are a lot of, there's a lot of need and a lot of questions when it comes to health insurance. Um, in this area, we focus a lot on disability products, major medical group policies and individual policies. There's always a lot of training that has to be done, uh, a lot of license you have to maintain, but the good news is things are always changing and you're always learning and keeping up with it so you can inform your customers and keep them updated with the changes. All right. Sounds great. And we also have with us today our very own, the owner of Lebanon Insurance Agency, Jessica Pruitt. So she'll be chiming in here and there as well. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's move on to an insurance specific question. Uh, very basic. What is the difference between Medicare Part A and Part B? Okay. Um, that's a good question. A lot of people don't realize that there are two parts to Medicare. Medicare Part A is hospitalization. That covers just hospitalization if you're in the hospital. Medicare Part B is everything else. Um, that's your doctor's office visits. That's your, uh, excluding prescriptions, it does not cover prescriptions, but it's your chemotherapy, your radiation, your doctor's visits, durable medical equipment, oxygen, hospital beds. Um, lab work, that's everything other than hospitalization minus prescription plans. Medicare does not cover any prescriptions, but it does cover intravenous medications that you receive in the hospital or at a doctor's office. Okay. All right. And then there's even a part or a plan G, correct? Yes. Um, plan G is a supplemental plan. Your Medicare part A and part B, they have deductibles. Um, it's around $1,300 for the Part A deductible. It's $185 for the Part B deductible. And the Plan G is a true supplement where Medicare pays the first 80%. And once you pay your Part B deductible, it pays your car. Plan G covers your Part A deductible, but you are responsible for your Part B deductible. That's federal law. And once you meet that $185 max amount of pocket, as long as Medicare covers the first 80%, your plan G picks up the additional 20%. So with those, you just pay a premium every month, your $185 deductible one time per year, and essentially all your medical costs are covered as long as Medicare covers the first 80%. You have no other out-of-pocket costs. Okay. Um, and you, you touched on Medicare Part B, the deductible. Is there anything else that you would like to add to that or elaborate on as far as the Part B deductible goes? It, it's just a one time per year deductible. A lot of people get confused. They think it's per episode, but it's one time per year. And it's just that 20%. So if, um, but it's $185 one time per year, there's no other um, deductible. Once you, once you meet that deductible, then your deductible is satisfied at, at that point. All right. Great information. Um, let's move on. What is the difference between a supplement and an advantage plan? You're all full of good questions today. That's, <laughs> that's good. Um, an advantage plan and a supplement are two totally different things. You'll hear a lot of people say, um, I've got a supplement and then I ask them who it's with and they'll say, well, it's an advantage plan. An advantage plan is not a supplement. It's actually privatized Medicare. And with that, um, it can be a PPO, it can be a HMO. There are a lot of different um, dynamics to it. The supplemental is pretty cut and dry. It you you remain on original Medicare, and if Medicare pays eighty percent, your supplement picks up the difference. With uh, the Advantage plan, 
You actually are, Medicare is privatized for you. A lot of times there's zero dollar premiums with those. Um, you still have to pay your Part B premium, which is one forty four sixty per month, but it includes mm-hmm. dental, vision, prescriptions, and your medical all rolled into one nice little package. So there are some advantages to the Advantage plan. There are some disadvantages to the Advantage plan, but the main thing is it is not a supplement. Um, and I like to reiterate that you have to have a special license to offer the Advantage plans mm-hmm. and the prescription plans. And that is one thing they're really adamant about the federal government is that it's not a supplement and your clients need to know that because, you know, sometimes they're they're good plans, but they're not a supplement. People need to know that it's all based off networks. And even though the networks are expanding and they cover most places, it is not the same as a supplemental plan. All right. That's very good to know. Um, All right. So moving on, what is, Medicare open enrollment. Everybody has heard of that at this point. What is it? Yes. Um, it's from De- from October 15th to December 7th each year. That's Medicare open enrollment. And during that time, you can sign up for an Advantage plan if you would like. You can change your prescription plan. You can change your Advantage plan. That really has not a whole lot to do with the supplemental plans because if you have a true supplement, you can change those once a month as long as you can go through underwriting. With the Advantage plan, there are no underwriting. There's no underwriting involved, so that gives you one time per year that you can change those. And a lot of people say, "Well, why do they just do it once a year?" Well, if they didn't, people would be changing all the time. <laughs> so when you when with the supplemental plans, you don't have to go through you have to go through underwriting with those. So those are more of a locked in type deal. But the the open Medicare open enrollment that's for prescription plans and to join an Advantage plan. And if you have an Advantage plan at that time you can drop it and return back to original Medicare if you, if you wish to do so. But there are, there are some underwriting issues that take place during that time. All right. Very good. Um, what are some questions when people are signing up for insurance that you wish that people would ask just to be more informed about their health care and their insurance, but they don't normally ask those questions? Well, a lot of times people still don't understand the concept of the open enrollment since the Affordable Health Care Act for the under 65 market. Um, I know we're mainly focusing on Medicare here, but um, there are a lot of changes. A lot of people don't understand that their group health insurance is all ACA compliant. So, uh, you know, I have a lot of people come in and they think they think that the Affordable Health Care Act and a lot of people refer to it as Obamacare, um, that it's an insurance that's just out there that they can get. The Affordable Health Care Act or Obamacare, as a lot of people refer to it as, that's the law. There is no insurance that is Obamacare insurance. That's just the law. And any any ACA-compatible group plan, any ACA-compatible um, individual plan, that's all under the law. So even when people talk, um, and basically what the law, there's, there's a lot of dynamics to the law, but it, it, it excludes pre-existing conditions. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, there is an open enrollment for the individual plans. It can, um, you can get a sliding scale and pay less premiums. But uh, I wish people were more informed about the ACA, and I'll be glad to answer those questions because it, it can be confusing and things have changed a lot in the last seven or eight years when it comes to, to health coverage, both on the group market, the Medicare market, and the individual market. Absolutely. Yeah, there have been a lot of changes. Um, So the next question is, what recent changes have you seen made to policies due to new legislation? So more recently, what have you seen? Well, again, there's a lot of dynamics to that. Um, They're still just forming those for the 2021 year. The biggest thing that I've seen is the executive orders to, uh, to help with insulin. In this area, we have a lot of diabetics. And um, the insulins have come down tremendously versus last year. Sometimes people, we're just now getting the open enrollment and kind of seeing what the prices are going to be. But last year I had folks that were paying, you know, two, three hundred dollars a month for certain insulins. And now that cost has gone down to fifty dollars per month because of the executive wow. legislation. So mm-hmm. there are some changes, mainly in the prescription form. Um, a lot of telemedicine now that. You know, with COVID-19, that's, that's a new thing. Uh, a lot of companies are offering those. 
So it's there's a lot of changes coming. If anybody had any specific questions, I'd be glad to look them up for them and try to find out. But it's we're still just learning the basics on them. But the the biggest thing I've seen so far, the new legislation has been with the insulin, which is it's really going to benefit a lot of people in this area. Absolutely, yeah. Um, all right, so we see uh, talk about rewards programs with health insurance. Are you seeing a lot of that sort of thing as far as benefits for living a healthy lifestyle and, and that sort of thing? Yes. Um, um, the training, uh, I have training later on today that will cover that specifically, but um, there are three tiers. A lot of companies, if you get your flu shot, if you get an annual physical, and if you have a smoking sensation, either have quit smoking or do not smoke at all, and your doctor signs off on it, certain companies will give you $150. That's not so much in the Medicare side of it, but the group pop, the group side of it, uh, under 65 group non-Medicare. But a lot of the Medicare companies, uh, they offer enrollments into certain health plans, the Silver Sneakers plan. They offer different benefits, depending on the company. If you get, like, if you get your flu shot, if you get your shingles shot, your pneumonia shot, um, that's that's really becoming an added value now because they have seen the benefits of preventive care. If you have a colonoscopy after the age of 50, it's, there are a lot of benefits and they're rewarding those. Not only is it a healthier lifestyle for you, but they're, the companies are rewarding the, the policyholders if they take advantage of all these. And, and most um, preventive care is at a $0 cost. So it's really a no brainer to, to do it and not only get the rewards, but potentially save your life in the process. That's awesome. Everybody should take advantage of that for sure. <laughs> uh, um, so we have a question about alternative medicine and how much that's being covered. Do you see more coverage of things like acupuncture, chiropractics, that sort of thing? They, it is becoming more prevalent. Uh, years ago, that was not covered at all. It is beginning to be covered more, um, you know, they're still not, they're still not covering the, um, I'm trying to, best, the uh, essential oils or anything like that. They don't <laughs> cover that, but they do cover, and a lot of people use those, and a lot of people ask about that, but mm-hmm. at this time, it's more of an acupuncture, more of a chiropractic. Um, it's, they don't use, they don't cover any herbal medications and stuff like that. But they are seeing the benefits more of vitamins and over-the-counter products. And a lot of companies are offering a benefit once a month or once every three months. They'll send you a, uh, a coupon for certain vitamins and different over-the-counter products that kind of fit into that herbal process as well. But, um, but definitely acupuncture and chiropractic medicine, they are covering that a lot more than they did in the past years. I've seen that a lot more recently. Okay. Yeah. I think I know of a case too, where somebody justified the need for massage therapy and I think her insurance ended up covering it. Have you seen that? Yeah, anything medically necessary. Yeah. Um, you know, they can, a lot of times they'll cover if, you know, if you just have a sore back and won't massage, that may not be covered, but right. definitely they're, they're willing to, to look into that now more than they ever have. They're seeing the benefits of the professional massage therapist that can, that can, uh, help relieve some pain. A lot of opioid addiction, they're trying to steer away from that. So any alternatives that they can give to ease the pain that people suffer without having to put them on a medication, they're open to now more than ever. That makes sense. Um, Okay, so do any of your companies offer things like 24-hour nursing assistance, like a call line, um, you know, telemedicine where you can call in and just, um, like I had an incident where I had a spider bite and I actually dialed in and I saw a doctor on the screen and I showed (laughs) her my spider bite and she was able to write me a prescription for an antibiotic. So are you seeing a lot of that sort of thing? Yes, that's a very good question. Um, most companies, um, to my knowledge, all the companies right now are offering that. And this is maybe some of the short-term companies, short-term medical companies do not. But any ACA-compliant plan, any Medicare-compliant plan, they do offer that. 
because every scene with the COVID-19, people are not wanting to get out as much. They don't want you to get out as much. Right. If they can see you over online and diagnose you, um, that's going to make it easier and better for everybody. And now we have the technology and, um, you know, it's, it's cheaper for the, a lot of them have zero dollar copays when this happens. Uh, if you want to do telemedicine, it, there's no charge whatsoever out of pocket for you. Um, the, it works out better for everybody. The doctors don't have to, they can work out of their home instead of having to work out of an office with a hundred thousand dollars worth of bills every month. Uh, right. The consumer doesn't have to travel or the, the patient doesn't have to travel to go see the doctor. It cuts down on the spread of disease. There's so many benefits that they've realized. So most companies are offering that now and at a zero dollar copay. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. Um, all right. So one more question before we move on to um, our panel. We are seeing a lot of network changes that mean that all local doctors are are not considered in network. So is there a way to make sure that something doesn't happen where maybe a doctor I've been seeing regularly won't be in the network if I change a policy or purchase well, policy? Um, if, if it's under 65 plans, um, there are a lot of, um, you can choose a PPO plan if it's a group policy. Um, the individual market, it's a little bit limited now uh, just because in this area um, of Southwest Virginia, when the state of Virginia, there's 58 counties that only, and this is for the under 65 market, individual market. There's 65 counties that only, or 58 counties that only have one carrier. And the majority of those counties are on the Eastern shore or Southwest Virginia. Uh, we just have one carrier in this area that's ACA compliant in the individual market under 65. So that network's pretty strong. Um, as long as you stay in Virginia or the cities and counties that border Virginia, that's the network. Um, Pre-ACA, uh, some of our bigger carriers had about 93% participation rate. Now they've got about 91%. So it hasn't really changed that much. A lot of doctors have joined up with these ACA compliant individual plans. Mm -hmm. Medicare wise, if you're worried about your doctors being in network, I would check those every year. If you go with a supplemental route and they take original Medicare, you don't have to worry about the network. There are no network restrictions as long as they accept Medicare and you have a true supplement. If you go the Advantage plan route, they uh, that is based off the network, a PPO plan, will give you in and out network coverage. You get a better deal if you go in network, but that is something I suggest people check every year with their doctor's office or with their agent and make sure that their doctor and their hospital is still in network with the particular company they have, because that could change every year as the, as the uh, contracts come back out. But also the flip side of that is as more people go on these advantage plans, the bigger the network is getting and the more doctors that are in network. I've seen it, um, go from one county here locally at one time they had two doctors that accepted the advantage plan and now I don't know of any doctors in that county that do not accept it so over the 10 or 15 years this has been going on the networks have really gotten a lot better okay good to hear uh, so you guys heard check with your doctor in addition to your agent so mm -hmm. Um, all right, we're going to shift gears a little bit now, and Jessica's going to chime in a little bit. We're going to alternate reading all these wonderful questions that have come in. Um, we gave you guys a chance to um, ask what you needed beforehand, and uh, we're just going to kind of take them as they come. So, Jessica, would you like to start? I can. Um, I know you've already touched on this a little bit, but we have someone asking if they're required to have a, pres a separate prescription drug coverage. You are not uh, required to have, for Medicare, is, are you talking about, I said Medicare. Um, if you, you are not required to have a separate prescription plan. However, if 60 days after becoming eligible for Medicare and not having group coverage, if you have group coverage, you're fine with that. But if you do not, you know, if you're on a spousal insurance, if you're still working and covered under the group insurance, you're fine. But after 60 days of losing credible coverage or becoming 65 and eligible for Medicare, if you do not take out a prescription plan, then you have to wait till open enrollment to sign up for one or a qualifying event. 
And at that time, you will pay one and a half percent of the national average, which is around 30 percent, 30 cents per month for every month you do not have coverage. So if you go a year without coverage, and you decide to get a plan. You're looking at if your plan would be twenty dollars, you're looking at paying twenty three sixty for it and so on. If you go two years, that same plan would be twenty seven twenty with it. So you have to just every for every month you don't have coverage after your after you go 60 days without it, you're looking at 30 cents per month. And that's a penalty that you have to pay. And that's per the federal guidelines. Mm. Okay. Um, so this is a little bit broader question, but um, so my dad retired last year, so we can pretend we're giving my, my dad <laughs> advice, but um, what number one piece of advice would you give someone considering retiring um, about looking for health insurance. So what have you learned over the years that people need to be told? Become informed. Um, ask your friends, ask your neighbors what they suggest, what they have. Word of mouth is going to give you an idea. And then sit down with an agent and discuss with them your needs, your wants, and let them explain to you the good, the bad, and the ugly of every plan. There are advantages and disadvantages to either route you want to go, and your agent can explain that to you, but it helps them, or it always does me, if someone comes in after they've talked to, and after they talk to their brother or their sister or their next door neighbor, and see what they have and what they don't like about their plan, and that kind of gives us a base to go off of. If they say, hey, look, my cousin Larry has plan X, he's really happy with it, we go to the same doctor, we take the same types of medications. We're both in the same health uh, realm and he's happy with it. And then that kind of gives us an area to go to because it can be, can be very difficult to make a decision. It can be a little scary for some folks as well because it's a big change and it's an important change. And I don't think people don't, don't think people realize that at the time. Sure. We have another one coming in. Um, it says, I lost my job during this pandemic. Do I have any options or am I stuck without insurance for the time being? No, actually that's um, from the time you lose coverage, you have 60 days to, if you're to get coverage. Um, if you're under 65, you have 60 days. We can go through the marketplace and get you an ACA compliant plan. If you're over 65, you already have, you already have part a, that would be a qualifying event coming off group, group coverage to sign up for part B and you have to do that through social security, but we can't help you guys with that. That's one service we offer of getting you the forms and able to, to get those to the social security administration. And then we can help you with the process of getting signed up. But the key is that 60 day time window. If you, if you lose coverage, you have 60 days to get you something. And if you don't, then you'll have to wait for the open enrollment periods to do so. Mm. All right. Um, so are there any restrictions that a person should watch out for when they're searching for a plan, anything that they might run into that might be an obstacle? Well, you know, obviously if you go online and you do a search engine, you're going to come up with a thousand different avenues you can go. A lot of those are short-term plans. Um, if you're under 65, a lot of them are short-term plans. With those, they do not exclude pre-existing conditions and they're only good for six months at a time. So if you, uh, if you take one out in January and you have a stroke in May, well, then they're not going to renew that. And by law, they don't have to. If you go with the ACA compliant plan, they cannot base your premium or the availability on your health or any pre-existing conditions. So that plan is good. It's good for as long as you pay your premium, as long as the plan is still offered in that area. And, um, that's the biggest thing that I would, a lot of people, they see the less expensive plan and they go for it, but there's no such thing as a free lunch sometimes. And that's where an agent really comes in, really comes in handy because they can tell you which, which route to go, which is going to be more beneficial to you and, and explain the fine print to you that you might not know. And, and then you get stuck with something that's really worthless. You're just wasting your money on. There is a lot of fear right now regarding the Affordable Care Act. I think there's still a lot of misunderstanding. What's the biggest misconception you hear regarding this? People don't realize they're already on it. <laughs> when they retire from a, <laughs> from a business, they, 
they don't realize that it's a law, that it's it's not an insurance, it's just the law. And if they have group coverage, it has to it, it's more than likely ACA compliant. So they already have the ACA insurance and they watch the news and they hear you know polit- politicians complaining about it one way or the other, but chances are they already have insurance that it's already ACA compliant and they don't realize it's just the law, that it's not a fictitious insurance out there that's all gloom and doom. It has has some real obviously there's some things and it usually comes down to money that people don't like about it. They don't like the uh, some of the premiums they have to pay. They don't like some of the networks that they have to deal with. But they enjoy the fact that there's no pre-existing conditions, and then it pays for a physical once a year at 100%. So there are some benefits to it, and there's nothing perfect. But chances are they've already had ACA compliant coverage. They just don't realize it. All right, what? we have all these hard, you guys are giving me all these hard questions today, so I'm glad oh. I'm my game this morning. <laughs> Exercising your brain, right? That's right, that's right. I'll have to take a nap after this is over with. <laughs> so, um, we have another question along the lines of alternative medicine, um, or and not so much too. Are visits to the chiropractor or physical therapist covered under the Affordable Care Act? If it's medically necessary, I'd have to look at each policy. Um, that all comes down to um, each company and the policies that they write. Some are, some are not. And then um, it really depends on if the chiropractor or the acupuncturist, if they're in network, if they've signed a contract. Some of the bigger group plans cover it, no problems. But as far as the particular ACA um benefit it's not to my knowledge mentioned specifically in there but some insurance companies add that in as a benefit to their ACA compatible plans. Um, This is another question from our chat. Many plans I've seen shows a family deductible. What does that mean? Okay that's a good question. You have an individual deductible and then a family deductible and it really depends on your plan. Um, for instance, if you have a $1,500 individual deductible, a lot of times with a particular plan that doubles for a family or it's three times. So if you have a $1,500 deductible per person, that's usually more than likely either a $3,000 or a $4,500 deductible for the family. Whether you have one person or you have 10 people in your family, of course, um, spouses and children, it won't be your grandmother or your, your cousin that's in your family, but uh, your immediate family that's on the plan, that's usually double or triple what the single person deductible is. So it would go from 1500 to 3000 or to 4500 depending on what the plan specifics are. All right, awesome. Um, we have time for a few more questions. Uh, do you ever recommend the health exchange to a client? Yes, we use the healthcare marketplace quite a bit. So um, I don't suggest you navigate it by yourself. <laughs> I would, I would, you know, contact an agent. That's what we're here for to uh, to help navigate that for you. Um, it can be pretty, it can be pretty scary if you go in there and it doesn't cost anything or we don't charge anything at Lebanon Insurance Agency to to give a consultation. So. Uh, we'll be glad to do that for you and go over it with you and help walk you through that process. Um, but the, as far as saying go to the marketplace and do it yourself, I never do that. I'm more than happy to help our clients walk through that and do it with them. And then here's another one. We hear this quite a bit, actually. My employer offers insurance, but I think it's too expensive. Can I apply for a subsidy or do I have any other options to purchase health insurance on my own? If it is offered to you through your employer and you don't meet certain guidelines, then there's some economic guidelines there. And I I don't have those numbers right in front of me, but if it's offered to your employer and it's affordable and it's the government's definition of affordable, not what you think is affordable. Um, There's a lot of things I don't think are affordable that the government tells me is very affordable, but um, they, uh, you you are, you can get an individual policy and pay full price for it, but there's no real advantage to that. 
Um, to be eligible for a subsidy, you cannot have group coverage that you're eligible for. So I hope that answers that question. Absolutely. Um, all right, let's 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 go on to this question here about uh, somebody who's leaving their job. Um, do they have to take COBRA? No, they do not have to. Um, there again, it becomes to the affordability. If they are going to be 65 in two or three months and are eligible for Medicare in two or three months, sometimes I suggest staying on COBRA if depending on their medical conditions their, and their their needs, but no, they do not have to stay on COBRA. If they lose coverage, they have 60 days to get another plan. And then after, sometimes the COBRA is more affordable for them. Sometimes it's not. And that would just be something that we, we would be glad to give them a consultation on and, and help them look at their COBRA and help them compare plans and see which would be the best for them. And there again, we don't charge anything for that. We, there's no fees to come in and, and let us review that with you. Awesome. And um, here's another one from the chat. Is there any chance I could be turned down for coverage? Well, if you do a non-ACA compliant plan, yes. If you do an ACA compliant plan and you're with, during open enrollment or within your 60 days and have the documentation where you lost coverage, then no, you couldn't be turned down. But if you did a, a non-ACA compliant plan, and which is a short-term plan, then yes, they do have medical underwriting for those. And, and that is, um, legally, they can turn you down for a non-ACA compliant plan. All right, let's wrap up with this final question. Don't uh, make it hard, make it an easy one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was laid off and don't have any income right now. Am I still required to sign up for health insurance during open, open enrollment? Well, yeah, that's up to you. If you don't want to have insurance, you definitely do not have to sign up for it. But Virginia, and I assume most of our folks are going to be in Virginia watching this, but um, a lot of states have expanded Medicaid. Virginia was one of them. So if you have income, and last year, I believe it was below 17000 for an individual, you are eligible for, um, for Medicaid. And so if you have no income, for goodness sakes, don't go without health insurance. Um, again, we can come, we can help you, we can review that with you, we can see if, uh, if you're eligible for a ACA compatible plan through the marketplace. If you're not, then it will tell you if you're eligible for Medicaid and it will actually send your um, application to the Met Virginia Medicaid and they will decide if you're eligible or not. And to my knowledge, once they say you're eligible, I haven't had anybody turned down that I know of. So there's always alternatives out there, but you know, if you don't want health insurance, you do not have to have in health insurance, but just because you don't have any income, don't think you can't afford it because there are other options. And again, we'll be glad to help you with that. Even if it's something that, you know, we're not, if it's not technically our job, we'll be glad to help you and point you in the right direction and find, find you some insurance that you can afford. Awesome. Well, Andy, thank you so much for your time. What thank a wealth you, uh, of knowledge, yes, to have within this company, um, to have as a resource. So guys, if your questions weren't answered today, if you still have questions, make sure you connect with, with the right person uh, within Lebanon Insurance Agency. Um, we'll find your agent for you. You can get in touch with us on uh, any of our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, you can go to our website um, and find a phone number. You can find an email address, just whatever works best for you. Get in touch with us and we'll connect you with the right agent. But you guys have a wonderful day and uh, hope, we hope to see you again on our YouTube page. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>